Welcome to the Legacy Leaders Podcast. Are you doing the best for your client to help them create their legacy? Are you creating a plan that goes far beyond finances to help people ensure that it becomes the driving force behind all decisions? On this podcast, hosts Katie Beth Hand and Stan Miller will help you with growing your practice and your client's peace of mind. Together, they bring the best and brightest minds to share with you how to help your clients develop their best legacy. And now, here are your hosts, Katie Beth and Stan. Welcome to the Legacy Leaders Podcast. I'm your guest host, Attorney Adam Diamond with Diamond Legal in Northern Illinois. We are your family's law firm helping with divorce, wills, trusts, and real estate closings. Today, my guest is insurance expert, Joe Janicki, whose name I don't think I said wrong. You did it right. Joe? You got it right. <laughs> with Brightly Insurance, Joe, thank you so much for joining me. Thanks for having me, Adam. I appreciate it. Thanks for the opportunity. So, Joe, this is just pretty much an interview of you and your journey to becoming an insurance provider and what you like about it. So if you don't mind me asking, why did you get into insurance or become an insurance provider? That's a fun question. The answer is completely by accident. I worked in retail automotive for most of my career. And um, at a certain point, my father got sick and I moved out to Kansas City to take care of him. And during that time, I looked at you know, I'd left the automotive world. Well, what am I going to do? And I had looked into possibly opening a, an insurance agency. So I went through all the licensing and I, I got all that stuff taken care of. And I was uh, talking to a couple different insurance companies. And um, while that was going on, I was offered a uh, job with a consulting firm and uh, back in the automotive world, um, which would allow me to have the flexibility to take care of dad and still travel and work and stuff like that. So, so I took that and I went, into consulting. And after when COVID hit, we weren't allowed to get on airplanes anymore. We weren't allowed to stay in hotels. And that was pretty much my career. So that came to a screeching halt. And I was back to trying to figure out what I was going to do with my life. And um, I had had my insurance license and talked to my wife about it. And we decided that um, let's go after this, this insurance thing again. And uh, I spent probably, I don't know, three, four months trying to uh, figure out, do I want to go captive? Do I want to go independent? What's the best route to go? Um, and what I is what is captive or independent? What are those things? Absolutely. Mean? So so captive agent would be um, like a state farm agent where they only offer state farm products or farmers, where they only have farmers products. Uh, whereas an independent agent uh, like us at Brightway, I have over a hundred different companies that we work with. Um, wow. So it really gives us the opportunity to represent our clients um, and, and not represent the company. So we're always looking to find the best way to, to cover our clients. So what Maybe it's with two companies, maybe it's bundled with one company, but really gives us the flexibility to serve our clients better. So yeah, so I, I came across uh, Brightway and I, I spent a couple months trying to figure out a reason not to, uh, to open a Brightway office. And uh, <laughs> Needless to say, I failed. So here we are. <laughs> <laughs> that is a very interesting way of describing that, <laughs> but probably a very accurate way when, when you're an entrepreneur. <laughs> so what are some common issues you find yourself helping people with? So that's a great question. I said, it, we really try to understand our clients' needs. We don't want to leave anything uncovered. We don't want to leave any gaps in coverage. Um, it's really our goal to ensure that everyone we work with has exactly what they need, um, no more, no less. Uh, so, so some common issues uh, I would say, and you know, when I look at um, clients that come into us, come to us, a lot of times I think status quo is clients get thrown into the system, right? They sold the policy, uh, it they get put in the system, they get forgotten about, and they're not not reviewed, not reviewed. Nobody's looking at that coverage down the road, and many times we get them in, and they come to us because they're looking for price. And as we start looking at their, their current coverage, we uncover that in many cases they're underinsured. So that's that's probably our, our biggest. Uh, what, would, what type of problems would being underinsured create for people? Absolutely. So I'll give you an example and, and how it relates to kind of what you do. And that is we look at um, assets. So we're in a pretty affluent area here. Many of our clients have you know, high net worth, have you know accumulated assets. And where it can really hurt. What is them. what is the area? I, I don't think I said it. In, in oh, the... sorry. Yeah, I'm in Lake Zurich. We're uh, surrounded by uh, you know Hawthorne Woods, Lake Zurich, Long Grove, Barrington, you know northern suburbs here um, of Illinois. So 
But when we look at, at, at asset levels and then I look at liability limits on the auto or the home, if I don't have enough liability coverage to protect my assets, my tangible assets, then I leave myself open or exposed to have to pay out of pocket for claims. So it, it, it can really hurt clients if, if we're not, you know, continuously looking at it and making sure we have enough. A lot of times clients will go online and purchase their own insurance. And again, it comes down to here's the price, right? Here's the premium. Uh, but are we looking at what those coverages do, how they work, and how they really can protect what you've been working towards um, in many cases for, for your entire life? You, 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 you're you saving, you're building wealth, you're, you're building assets, and you're doing all that stuff right. But if we don't protect it, then it can be gone in, in a flash. So. So what are some situations where this actually comes up? Because a lot of people think, well, I, got, I just kind of got to have insurance. Um, you're saying, no, 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 wait a minute. All these things you're building up or you've built up over your life, you protect with insurance because of liability. We talk a lot about liability. What are the types of situations where that comes up? Yeah, so a big thing I, I don't think that that we think about enough is with liability, we'll, we'll talk about liability limits on, on your auto, for example. That's, that's you know, a huge risk. Every time you get in a car, you have the potential to, you know, to, to get into an accident or, uh, or hurt somebody or injure somebody or damage property, right? They call them accidents because we don't mean to do them, but they do happen. And when they do, you know, I, we look at liability, bodily injury, a lot of people, you know, will come in and, and they've got, let's just say standard is $100,000 per person in bodily injury coverage, $300,000 per accident. So if you hit me and I'm injured, it'll cover $100,000 for my injuries. If you hit me and my family's in the car, there's $300,000 there to pay for those injuries, uh, but no more than $100,000 per person. And then property damage limits, you know, are, a lot of times are 100,000. Well, I can name probably, you know, a good majority of the cars on the road are $60,000 or more. So, you know, God forbid there's an accident and there's more than one vehicle involved, or you hit a really expensive car, you can hit that $100,000 very, very quickly. And same thing with the bodily injury limits. You can hit those very quickly. So it's important to keep in mind that if I have you know, some assets, if I'm wealthy, if my home is paid for, right, that I've got enough liability coverage in that policy to cover my assets so that you know, if I am in that accident and I do hurt you know, several people. I can tell you a couple months ago over the summer, there was an accident out uh, near our office. There were 10 cars involved, <clears throat> right? That adds up really, really quickly. People are injured, cars are damaged. And what could happen is if we don't have the coverage in our auto policy, or we don't have an umbrella policy to cover the, the additional liability, then we're paying out of pocket for anything that goes above and beyond that claim. And Whoa. that's what we want to avoid, right? You know, the, the lawyers will get involved and, uh, and they're looking for, you know, first that they're going to, the, the insurance policy is going to pay out. But beyond that, if, if damages go above and beyond, there's only one place left to go. And that's, that's the individual. You use the term umbrella policy. What is that? So an umbrella policy would basically, if you can imagine an umbrella, it's, it's sitting above and beyond or above your home, your auto policy. And it gives you extra liability. So if I have, I'll give an example, my, my auto insurance policy, I have a half a million dollar, what's called a combined single limit policy. So I have $500,000. It's a, it's a bucket of money that if I'm in an accident, I injure somebody, I damage cars, whatever the case, I'm responsible, I'm liable. I have a half a million dollars there to pay out for those damages. I also have a million dollar umbrella policy. So now if I do have a claim that's filed, it goes above and beyond the limits of my auto policy. There's another million dollars there to help pay for, you know, any additional claims. So that's not a million dollars is a lot of money. Are those umbrella policies expensive? Super inexpensive, oh. super inexpensive way to protect your assets. Yeah. In a lot of cases, they look at when they're rating an umbrella, it's different from how they rate an auto policy. It's different from how they rate a home policy. Uh, they rate an umbrella based on how many risks you have. So if I have three rental properties and I have motorcycles and four cars and six drivers and two of them are under 21, right? That umbrella can get expensive because I have all these additional risks. So at any time any of those risks come into play, there's potential for the umbrella to pay out, right? But if I just have a home auto, uh, I just worked with a client today and she has a home and auto. 
It's just her in the house. And a million dollar umbrella for her was $175 for the year. So wow. really an inexpensive way to protect your assets. And it's funny because we bought our umbrella, not because I was an insurance agent. Um, it was because we had started working with a new wealth manager. And during that time working with that wealth manager, we went in our first meeting, he gave us a checklist. That these are the things you have to do before our next meeting. And that second line item on there was to call our insurance company, and get an umbrella policy. And he explained it to us and, and how it protects our, our, our assets. And, and we did. And lo and behold, we called our, our company, who was Liberty Mutual at the time, and uh, found out we didn't have the auto limits that were required to have the umbrella. So we had to increase our auto limits. We had to increase oh my gosh. our auto limits. So, and we've had an umbrella ever since. But it wasn't because I was an insurance agent that we did it. So, so if this sounds kind of overwhelming or confusing or candidly, some people are like, you know, I don't have a lot, a lot of time to invest in this adulting stuff. Do you help people kind of figure out what they need? Yeah, our goal here at Brightway is really to offer simplicity in a very complex world. We try to, to make it as simple as possible. And, and really, like as I mentioned, just understanding our clients' needs. But really, our, our core focus here is to provide people peace of mind while always giving our clients more than they expect. But we understand that it's complex and that we understand that it's it's our job really to make it simple for clients to understand. So we make the process simple. We take a lot of stuff off the client's hands that they would normally handle, cancel old policies. I know that can be overwhelming at times. So uh, we just really want to own the process and, and make it as easy for someone to do business with us as possible. So if someone is just kind of checking things out, you have someone they could kind of chat with to see if you're a good fit? Always. Yeah. And I mentioned our core focus. Our first core value is to help first, right? So we answer that phone. It doesn't matter if somebody's just asking questions about, you know, about coverages or claims or how does this work, right? Our team knows that if somebody calls in, we help them. And one of the things that I think we really enjoy doing, we really enjoy solving problems, right? We really enjoy looking through and figuring out, you know, how can we you know, is there an issue that we need to solve? Is there a problem? If we can solve it, great. And maybe that solution isn't moving your insurance to us. Maybe it's calling your current agent and making a few minor tweaks or changes in your current policy. And that's okay. And that's where we want to come in. And, and like I said, our, our first core value is to help first. We do that. That's why we're here. We're here to help our clients understand what they need and make sure that they're in the right position always, even if that means that it's not with our company. Wow. That's fantastic. What are some misconceptions people have about insurance or insurance providers? The biggest one I think, and I was thinking about this, is that if Adam pays X for his homeowner's insurance and his car is this, and, and we both drive a Tesla, then that should be what mine is. And there's so many factors, I think, that go into rating for insurance and so many different things uh, that people don't consider. And, and when I look at a homeowner's policy, we're rating for, you know, the square footage, the finishes on the house. Is there a finished basement? Do you have a dog? And we work with a hundred companies. They all rate differently for these different factors. But then we look at auto and, and, and really some of the things that play into auto, we know it's, you know, I, I've never had an accident. I don't have any speeding tickets, but then there's age. There's how do you use your vehicle? How many miles do you drive? Where do you garage your vehicle? My daughter just moved from Aurora to Oswego. Her rates dropped, right? That's, that's It's a different garaging address. It's a different risk factor for, for theft or whatever else. Um, but they look at credit. They look at, there's so many different things. So we, I think the biggest misconception is my neighbor only pays 1200 bucks a year for his insurance. Why is mine 1600 right? And it's, you know, why is his car only... $500 for six months and, and, and mine is 800, right? There's, and there's also coverage limits, right? People have different coverage limits. So just thinking that, you know, well, this is the price for insurance is the price. Uh, there's, there's so many other factors I think that, play in, that people aren't aware of. And do you periodically check in with clients to review their coverage changes and also the pricing of the different products available? Absolutely. Yeah, we have, um, I have actually somebody in my office that is dedicated to reshopping, and in this year has been significantly worse than I think at least in the last 40 years with regards to pricing. So we're seeing just about every customer is going through and and, and getting reshopped, and we're looking for better options. We're reviewing coverage. We're uh, making sure that nothing has changed. We like to uh, 
to ensure that that we're we're still you know we have the same same stuff going on with the clients that we need to. But yes, at least once a year. Um, if a client prefers to be more often, uh, we will. Uh, but most of our most of our policies are on annual renewal terms, uh, so we see them come through automatically once a year. And like I said, I have a I have a remarketing team that's that's looking at at those as they as they come through. So, so if the price goes up, it's not just like an automatic increase, like a random letter that some people may get from some hypothetical agency that says, "Congratulations, now you're paying an extra thousand dollars a year." We really try to be proactive. So. In most cases, and I would say 80% of the time, uh, we get the renewal before the client does. And I have, we have systems set up that we we reach out to the client and we say, hey, Adam, uh, I just got a renewal. It went up. Here's what's going on in the market. And uh, we actually, I send out a video now to clients that we, we update periodically to let them know, hey, here's what's happening and here's why. However, we are looking at this. We're looking for better options. You don't have to do anything right now, but we'll reach out and let you know what we found. So just to kind of forewarn you so that when you do get that in the mail and you're like, hey, what the heck, you know, why, why is this going up? You, you've already heard from us and, and we're, we're letting you know that we're working. on. So it sounds like you accommodate people with both the need to understand the details and also the ones that say, give me the Cliff's notes. <laughs> <laughs> why did it go up? OK, is it still the best game in town for what I need? Yes. OK you can cater to that type of philosophy or someone that that is more detail oriented and says well let's dig into this a little bit what's really going on yeah everybody's different um we do like to make sure that we're going through an educational process with our clients though and 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 some people prefer a high level but at least to understand because i I think again so many people don't understand how these coverages work they get into it and they're like you know i i've I've got coverage my favorite is i've got full coverage what does that mean right? There is no such thing, right? So, um, you know, your full coverage and my full coverage can be completely different. So really helping them understand how they work, why they work, and why they're important. So, and making sure that they fit into their unique profile. The podcast we're we're on is called the Legacy Leaders Network. And so we talk a lot about legacy planning for families. Do you think insurance ties into that at all? Absolutely. Absolutely. You know, we, we circle back to our initial conversation about assets and net worth, right? I'll tell you a story about a client that came to us last year. Um, and this story sticks out in my mind because this couple is in retirement and, and I know what their asset level is. And I know that they are not working. They're not bringing any more money in. And they have been with their current agent. And I won't say the name of the, the company they were with, but they've been with them for 52 years. Wow. And when I got their current policy in hand, they had state minimum limits on their auto policy. Now, again, remember, they're in retirement. They're drawing on their retirement. They had their last $1.5 million, you know, whatever, to get them through their entire retirement. And they've got $25,000 of bodily injury protection on their auto. And they had, um, theirs had $25,000 in property damage which wow. um, it, it doesn't cover much in, in, in any accident. So every time they get into a car, they're at a risk of losing their entire you know, retirement. Um, and when we look at legacy planning, if that money was in a trust, if it's set to go to grandkids, if it's set, you know, however they wanted to, to pass that money out, they're going to pass it on in the blink of an eye because of a you know, lack of insurance coverage, that money can go away. You know, so um, it's super important. I think it's, 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 you know, we have to make sure that, you know, when we're, when we're looking at all the things we do to set up and, you know, it, it, we work with a couple of wealth managers that, you know, that work with their clients pretty frequently that come into us and, you know, we have a $5 million umbrella here. We have a $2 million umbrella here, right. To protect those assets that they're spending the time, the energy working and, and investing this money to grow because they're setting up, you know, for their future legacy for their families. Um, that if we don't protect it, um, it, it, it can go in a flash. Have you had any recent or noteworthy client wins or, or really good stories of victories or positive things? So many. This year, and, and I hate to say that they're wins because they're, they're stressful and traumatic when it happens, but we've had several claims this year. We had a lot of flooded basements, a lot of sump pump failures. We had several roofs that, that we've done um, due to storm damage. 
you know, and, and when those claims happen, knowing that we did the right thing here and knowing that the client had protection uh, is a win. I have, I have one client in particular that I think of and his sump pump failed. He was at work, came home to have two feet of water in the basement, completely finished. This kid plays down there. There's toys, there's personal belongings, all destroyed. Didn't know what to do. And he called us and we walked him through it. And we had a restoration company out there. They started cleaning stuff out, drying things, moving things, uh, and getting him back to whole. We had the insurance company come out, adjust it. And, you know, when those things go right, uh, it, it feels really good because you take them from what am I doing? What, what has happened? How am I going to get this back to normal uh, to some peace of mind that, okay, we know what we're doing, given the path, we figure out how to work through that claim. Right. And it was a couple months later, this individual had a well pump go out and again, uh, was getting ready to excavate the yard. It was getting ready to, to spend a whole bunch of money that they didn't have. And I said, time out. Why don't we put this through our equipment breakdown policy, uh, which he had, he had coverage for, and lo and behold, they covered the whole thing. They went out there, they wow. excavated, they replaced the well pump. And so two times in one year, and just I, I'm eternally grateful for our team for doing the right thing and making sure the client had the right coverage. Because when those calls come in, and we like to be involved with every claim, we want to sleep at night knowing that that we did the right thing for the client, that they've got the right coverage they need, that there's no gaps, that there's no holes, and that we can help them navigate that process and get them back to whole. Wow, that's that's a, a fantastic win. The um, Who is an ad- ideal client for you to work with, Joe? Really anybody that, that owns a home, drives a car, and anybody that, that wants to know about their coverage, has questions about their coverage. You know, if you know, our team is here, we're, we're happy to help and answer any questions we can for anybody. So yeah, any, anybody really. <laughs> so anybody that drives a car, has a home, and has or and or has questions about this adulting insurance stuff. Right. I love the term <laughs> adulting. Correct. <laughs> what's the what's the best way for someone to find you? Absolutely. So you can uh, visit our website, which is brightwayjanicki.com. It's uh, uh, b r i g h t w a y j a n i c k i dot com, uh, or call us anytime at eight four seven eight zero seven thirty two hundred. And we'll also put your complete contact information in the show notes if anyone wants to get a hold of you. So thank you so much for your time, Joe. It's been just an absolute pleasure to being able to hear and learn more about how you how you serve people and the amazing service you provide. So Thanks, thank you, everybody, for listening. This has been a Legacy Leaders podcast with guest host Adam Diamond and my guest today, Joe Janicki with Brightway Insurance. So thank you again, and we'll see you all soon. Thanks, Adam. You've been listening to the Legacy Leaders Podcast with Katie Beth Hand and Stan Miller. For more information on them and the show, please visit PinnacleLegacyLaw.com. If you like what you've learned today, do share the program with your friends and subscribe wherever podcasts are found.